Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on our special episode of Getting Real with Dana and Jenny. I'm Dana Bowman, co-founder of Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. And I'm Jenny Mahar. I'm the other co-founder of Thyroid Refresh, and we're so excited to be here with our team psychotherapist, Nadia Ahrens. Hi, Nadia. Hi, thanks for having me. So we promised you guys a special surprise Woo! today. What do you think? Purple power. Yeehaw! Let us know in the comments. Do you, is this yeah, a good what do you think? Should it yeah, be permanent? Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> My husband's like, I was going to take you out, but I was like, what are you talking about? I look cute. I'm trying to get a good view for you guys. <laughs> I think you look great. And it goes really well with your kind of lavender sweater. <laughs> it's my daughter's. <laughs> awesome. And look what I bought just for fun. I didn't oh, get a chance nice. to put it on yet, but yeah, fun. probably really toxic. Well, <laughs> if you know anything about thyroid refresh or thyroid 30, you know that we are all about purple. So that is our color. That's our brand. And we just wanted to do something fun today. Thanks, Div. Hi. We just wanted to do something fun today to celebrate that we are in enrollment for Thyroid 30 currently. And guys, this is it. This is our last Facebook Live during this enrollment window. We're going to be closing the enrollment on Sunday. So if you're interested in joining us for our winter wellness adventure, it starts Monday. We would love to have you along. Go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30 to sign up and don't delay because we are, we're getting down to the wire. So you're here, um, you're here, Dr. Brady Hurst. Fabulous lunch yesterday. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> fun. Hi, Dr. Brady. Um, okay. So today we're going to be talking about ways to stay motivated in winter. And um, Nadia is the perfect guest for this. She just did an incredible um, article for us about that fine line between the hyper natural hibernation mode that we sort of go into in the winter and actual depression. And, you know, I think this time of year, it can be hard to stay motivated, right? I mean, the days are shorter. It's, it's cold outside for many of us. Um, it can be hard to just get out, get our bodies moving and, and keep going. So we wanted it, to it chat with you, you about that today. It kind of makes you feel like you're blue, but not us. It's We're purple. purple. We're purple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's important. It's important to note. Uh, I mean, it's just a couple of things. One, um, <clears throat> there is that fine line between am I hibernating or is this seasonal affective disorder? Is this depression? And of course, if you're prone to depression or sad, you know, you have to check in with your with your doctors, you know, and not just say, oh, yeah, this is hibernation mode. You know, and so um, just that being said, the hibernation piece is really important because our society, our culture is so go, 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 go. And we as humans seem to forget that we're part of nature. And so when the days get shorter and the nights get longer and it's I, I'm, I'm in Seattle. And so, I mean, it is literally just getting light out. It's been light for about an hour and it's dark by four. It's hard to stay motivated. And so it's it's learning how to really tune into your body and go, OK, is this, um, you know, what do I feel like doing right now? You know, uh, is it, you know, having the tea and snuggling up? I mean, I've, I've got my little snuggle thing right now, you know, and because you, you want to cozy up during right. the darker months because it's part of our natural rhythm to do so. Um, that being said, we, we, we want to stay motivated. So how do you draw that line and how do you Find stay motivated? Right. Right. Well, I think one, you know, just like we've been talking about, one part of that is just remembering that to a degree, it's somewhat normal, you know, like nobody really feels as much like getting out and, and being active as they do. They, you know, they don't feel that naturally inclined to do that this time of year, as they might say in spring. Right. When everything in our nature is calling us to get out, get some sunshine, get into that warm, sunny, fresh air again, you know, after 
a winter of being more indoors, you know? Right. Well, and also um, the, what you just said, like no one feels like it. Sometimes I don't feel like it in the summer either where it's light until 10 o'clock at night, but it is one of those things that, you know, like I said, no one feels like doing the healthy thing. However, it's important to remember, okay, how am I going to feel after I do said healthy thing? You know, am I going to feel better after I exercise or am I going to feel better after I get an extra hour of sleep? And so it really is about tuning into your body and going, okay, not what do I feel like, but what is it that my body needs right now? Because sometimes it's an extra hour of sleep. Sometimes it's not going and taking the class, you know, you know, also if, if, you know, and movement is also really good for the body and general health that it's like, maybe you're not going and running outside like you might, maybe it's about taking a hot yoga class and doing something more nurturing. So again, it's really about tuning internally about like, what, what is it that I need right now? Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you're like, um, uh, all right, I'm going to be accepting of myself. I'm going to feel, you know, the whole self-care thing. I'm going to stay in. I'm not going to go to my class. And then the next day you're like, oh, well, I didn't go to my class yesterday. So I'm not going to go to my class today. And so finding that is really hard, but also maybe supplementing that with something that's maybe not as, you know, stringent, like you were saying, you know, Mm -hmm. substituting it for a hot yoga class, you know, like maybe if you stay in the one day and you cuddle up and you read your book and stuff, maybe the next day you're walking as opposed to going, well, since I didn't yesterday, I'm just going to skip it all together. You know, you, there's a, it's okay. There's baby steps, there's different levels. And I think all of that is really okay, especially for thyroid patients. Mm -hmm. Right. And giving yourself a break, Mm -hmm. you know, like, the the mental break, I mean, where it's just like, oh, well, I didn't do anything today, so I have to do something tomorrow. It's 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 accepting th- that your body might need that break also. And like you said, like maybe going for a walk the next day, you know, and and um, and again, I, I feel like a broken record. It is about really tuning tuning into what you need. The slippery slope, like you said, is like, well, I didn't go today. And well, maybe I'll just, you know, lay around the next day. And and then that's when it starts to, um, that's where that slippery slope, slope starts to come in, right? And so it's about going, that's when you go, okay, what's going to make me feel better? I don't, I'm not right. motivated to get up and do these things. However, I know I'm going to feel better if I do them. Perfect. And not beating yourself up over it and just getting back on, the wagon. I mean, we're January 11th. Everybody is huge into like, what's your resolution? What's your intention for the year? And it's, you know, it was, you know, I had a meme on my page that was like the, you know, you're festive for 26 days of, of um, the holidays. And then that week between Christmas and New Year's, it's like, I'm confused. I don't know what day it is. And I, and I've, have a lot of cheese in my body, you know, and so <laughs> it's all that one. <laughs> it, 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 wasn't that hilarious? It was great. Awesome figures. It I was just so thought funny. that was adorable. I but it's, you know, everybody is in this mode of like, God, I just came from a month of everything. And sometimes it's, it, you get too hard on yourself to be like, now I have to do all these things. And then it's a self-defeating yeah. um, attitude because your body can't do all of it. So again, it's those baby steps of going, okay, I'm just going to rein it in a little bit. I'm going to start walking. I'm going to be more mindful about my eating, you know, and and it's about nurturing yourself back to a place where you could get yourself back on the wagon and not be like, well, I just ate it three pounds of cheese over the past month. I'm not going to do, I'm just going to, you know, now go to McDonald's, you know, and so it's about just recognizing, okay. I did this and now it's about getting back on track. Yeah. And I love that. I love just that simple. It's about that simple awareness of what does my body need and how do these choices affect me? How will I feel after I eat another pound of cheese (laughs) versus how will I feel after I take a nap or, you know, Go to a, a Qigong class. You know, I've been doing this um, 
Qigong. It's like a based on Eastern, you know, medicine and Qigong class that I've been going to. And the instructor's amazing. She's always talking about how this time of year is not the time when we're supposed to have like these big holidays. Hi, Mary. Thanks so much for joining us. Our resident thyroid expert, Mary Showman, just popped in, guys. Along um, with our resident psychotherapist. And we had our resident uh, nutrition uh, <laughs> nutritionist, uh, a holistic nutritionist on here with us yeah, uh, just a few minutes ago. Here. It's, a, it's a party, right? Right. We, we love our team of experts. We're so blessed to have you guys all by our sides on this journey. But um, but yeah, that awareness of our daily choices and how am I going to feel after I do this, you know, and I think that's so much of what we try to offer to people with thyroid 30 is a system where you can increase your awareness of those daily choices and you can check in and, you know, say you're halfway through the program, you can look at your daily scorecard and you can see those areas where you've been making good, healthy choices and areas where you've been struggling that might change seasonally, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it'll change seasonally. Sorry. I was just going to say, you know, um, when you were talking about how am I going to feel after the cheese, you know, or how am I going to feel after, you know, the walk, you know, thinking about it? Well, initially I'm thinking I'm going to feel great for a little bit after the cheese, right? And I'm not going to be sad about it if that was my choice at the time to eat the cheese. OK, so that was my choice and I did it. But I do know that later it doesn't make me feel good and I get the stuff in the throat and that whole thing. So, you know, it's a kind of a little bit about looking beyond that. And that's another thing when you brought up thyroid 30. Um, it's perfect for that because maybe you give yourself um, that day during the thyroid 30 program. OK, I had cheese day, but you realize that tomorrow's a new day and you have 28 or 22 or however many more days left in the program. And, you know, you get to be intentional and very present during those 30 days. So that's one of my favorite parts. I can't wait. I'm like, I can't wait for it to start. I'm like, hurry up. I'm right. still, I'm still, though, I'm not just waiting to start then. I'm still doing some good things, but I'm excited for it to, to just be more fun. And, and, and well, the reality and is we're all human. We're all going to eat the cheese you know, and it's, and it's not beating, it's, it's don't beat yourself up over it. And it is getting back on that horse. And it, it's, that's where the change happens when you're like, okay, I'm human. I ate the cheese. I wanted to eat the cheese. I'm happy. I ate the cheese. And now I'm going to go for the walk. And, and it's continuing to know that at every moment and every day is a fresh start. And so um, when you take these small changes, that's where the lifestyle shift is going to occur. Just looking at the comments. Sorry, I don't mean to, I kind of have to do both <laughs> things, but everybody's commenting and it's just, it's really sweet. Yeah. We try to do something fun with our purple hair. So I yeah. just wanted to, to be silly and start the new year off happy. And uh, here we are. So we are in yeah. the middle of our enrollment in case you just joined us. Um, enrollment ends midnight on Sunday and gameplay starts uh, soon after. So we'd love to have you join our teams and check it out. So yeah. just wanted to throw that in before we move on. So you can go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30 to learn more or to sign up. We'd love to have you guys along. So yeah, purple power. Woohoo! Um, so Nadia, what are some other things that people can do to stay motivated in winter? We've talked about, you know, awareness of choices, not feeling defeated if we do fall off the wagon and adopting more of a, a lifestyle mindset versus I'm going to do something perfectly for 30 days. And, you know, what, what are some things, other things people can do? One of the things that are, are, is really important, and I tell my clients this all the time, is to have a morning ritual. Um, it, because, and what that means is, you know, getting up and nobody likes to hear this, but getting up earlier than what you're usually doing. And within that journaling, if you, you know, and, you know, or maybe reading something, um, nourishing or meditating or going to exercise. And, and I find that when my clients and even my, and myself included, when we do this, it sets up your day um, in a way where you have buffers, you know. And so mm -hmm. if you're getting up like with your kids and they're, you know, you're a short order cook and you're flinging breakfast at them or you're 
rolling out of bed and heading to work and putting makeup on in the car because you're rushed to get to your job, it, it, you're you're kind of setting yourself up for um, for failure. And I, I mean, I hate to use that word, but it's like when you could get up and have an intentional start to your day of what do I want this day to look like? How how am I going to um, give self care to my obviously to myself? But how am I going to care for myself today first? so that i could set myself up for success and the the number one best thing in doing that is getting up early and having a morning ritual and like look i get up at five i wasn't getting up at five when i first started doing this but as i started doing this over the years i found that i wanted more time to myself and the way to do that was to get up earlier but i love the quiet i have to agree I yes. love the quiet i love that i call it the you know that's my me time when and so i, I even kind of when someone wakes up and I'm not ready, I'm like, no, 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 this is still, right. no, you're, you're this early. But that means you doing? going to bed earlier too, right? I mean, what time do you go to bed, Not if you get up at 5 a.m.? Um, like 9.30. Wow, but it is, yeah. it's, it, it's an, it's a natural cycle. Like, you know, last night I had my book club and I didn't go to bed until 11.30, so I'm kind of tired today. But, you know, it's, again, it's the choices. Balance. Like, I wanted to go to my right. book club. But for the most part, you know, like when you're getting up at five o'clock in the morning, you can't stay up until 1130 because it's going to affect you the next day. So I, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm getting up earlier. So I'm just getting tired earlier. I'm still getting a good amount of sleep. And on the weekends, I sleep in and I and I right. nourish my body that way, you know, and so. And nourishing Again, your body you don't have to do the morning routine every single day, but I kind of set it into my like, OK, this is my work week. You know, mm -hmm. five days a week, I'm going to get up early and do my morning routine, it, which includes the journaling, the meditating, the exercising or reading something and 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 just taking that time for myself, that quiet time. And mm -hmm. and then on the weekends, I, you know, it's kind of like an 80 20, you know, I just, you know, relax more and I'm just like, OK, you know, I'm going to sleep into some charge, you know, right. and recharge. Yeah. So um, that's really once you start doing that. And again, it doesn't have to be 5 a.m. It could just be, you know, try it with just setting your alarm 20 minutes earlier. And, you know, I, I once heard like, you know, it doesn't matter what time you set your alarm for, whether it's 7.30 or 5.30, if you have to set your alarm, it's gonna suck waking up because you're <laughs> you're going against your natural rhythms, right? And so when you're waking up without an alarm, it's so much more refreshing. That's not what we do in our society. So whether it's 7.30 sure. or 5.30, it's going to suck. So you might as well get up anyway and start your day right, you, you know, know, with um, these self-care. I want to say um, a quick shout out to a few people that have um, joined us. Genova, Anna, is that how you say it? I wanted to say hello and hello to Carol, too. And Mary had a good point earlier. She said um, during winter, uh, during winter cold, many people need to increase thyroid dosage if you, um, if you feel draggy. And that's true. You need to get your thyroid rechecked. And also she said she has a sun lamp, which is so important. And I have it in my Amazon basket <laughs> and I haven't gotten it yet, but I need to. I have it in my Amazon basket, but I just wanted to mention those two yeah. things. And also to say that um, nourishing your body isn't, of course, it's all the things that Nadia was talking about, but it's also kind of taking that it's okay mentality. That's part of the nourishing. Like it's okay. You know, maybe, you know, one morning you aren't uh, following the, the, Routine, you know the routine you were wanting to do right. and you wake up and you say okay it's okay right and another thing that I wanted to mention is um, I'm really trying to on the days that I you know maybe miss the alarm or whatever and we get up and there's all these things that are going and people running around getting ready for school and stuff to take a moment and we were talking about this yesterday I was talking to Dr. Brady Hirsch yesterday um, listen and, and take moments for the pause so like be really intentional as opposed to just shooting into automatic pilot. If you are intentional about your movements, that can set your day up for success. Just right. being intentional, you know, as opposed to just robotic where you're just, right. okay. And then I brush teeth and then I, and you, where you're not thinking. It's like your, your body's not even yeah. thinking. It's just doing this stuff. So if you, while you're brushing your teeth, I think um, Adrienne Klein, or, or one of our experts, said something about she thinks about doing something particular while she's brushing her teeth. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, or, or maybe it was Leah Carver um, where she stops and take a, takes a pause where you're like brushing to, you're in an automatic pilot. You put your clothes yes. on, you know, you've made your bed and you've done your thing. And then you walk into the bathroom and you brush your hair, whatever. And then you brush your teeth. And then she says, I remember, Oh, okay. This is the spot where I'm supposed to go. Stop. Pause. Be intentional. Cause if you're in, late already starting out in your day and you haven't been able to set your routine up, like Nadia was suggesting, you can at least kind of give it, give it that extra little push by being intentional, right, Nan? Well, right. mindset is so huge, and that's a great time to, like, work in those daily affirmations and things when you're, like, say, brushing your teeth in the morning, using that habit stacking to get yourself in a mindset to stay inspired. And then, you're like, you know, like you said, you're not on autopilot, and you're also not reactionary, you know, because right. if everything is and you're not intentional or mindful, like, it, you, you know, you do become more reactionary when you take that moment to go, okay, let me just breathe, mm-hmm. whether it's brushing my teeth or, you know, trying to get kids out the door. It When you take that moment and take that breath, you're often, you're going to make the healthier choice, you know, and, and, and not be reactionary. Right. Yeah. I think too finding what works for you, meeting yourself where you're at and finding what works for you is so important too. If you don't love it, you're not going to stick with it. Maybe you have an idea that you should be doing CrossFit because it's what your friends are doing or you like the before and after pictures you see. Is that really right for you? You know, is that really what's going to be best for your body? Is it going to bring you, you know, a degree of joy to keep you on that path? And I think having like a little making time for a little having a passion party with yourself and just a pen and a piece of paper and you and maybe a cup of tea going, what do I love to do? You know, for me, I know anything outdoors in nature just absolutely fills my bucket, makes me feel alive It's like total self-care and rejuvenation. I get vitamin D, especially in the winter, you know, so whether it's getting out on my cross-country skis, my snowboard, you know, whatever. What do you guys? That that works works for for you. What works for you? Yeah, we want to know right in the comments. What works for you guys? What really fills your bucket? I read this post that Jenny had um, on Instagram last night about her cross-country skiing with her son uh, over, you know, under the moonlight, the full moon. And I mean, just goosebumps talking about it. Okay. That's a pretty spectacular moment, but just normal daily. What fills your bucket? You know, is it just the quiet in the morning? Uh, Anna joined us, uh, my friend, my sweet friend. Um, What, you know, what is the moment during the day, Anna, that makes you the happiest? Like find those moments, you know, like dancing, you know, the kids will put on a song and in the car and I'll have that, I don't know, three minutes where I don't even hear them, where I'm right. driving and dancing in the car, you know, take those pauses. I think that's um, well, and, really, really important. And if you don't know, because some people don't know what brings them joy, um, <clears throat> two things you could do is one, do a brain dump and just get a pen and your journal and just, just write everything that you could possibly enjoy. It doesn't have to do with it doesn't have to do with being healthy. It doesn't have to do with, with food, just everything. And so once you get that out onto paper, then you could start to see, oh, wow, there actually is a lot of stuff. It might be writing poetry, like who knows, you know, the, the other thing to do that will, that will help um, stay motivated is to set like an alarm for like three minutes, like put on some music and list out every accomplishment that you have had this year. I love that. Just okay, we're all doing it today. It's happening. Yeah. I love that. Oh, because it's it's so easy, you know, to say, oh, like, oh, great. I ate all that cheese, right? I mean, that could be an accomplishment, but I don't really think it is. But, <laughs> but it, you know, it's so easy to default to the negative and to default yes. to the things that you haven't done. And so yep. if you take that time and you, and and some people are just like, I don't want to do that, you know, and and then but what happens is like all of a sudden you have this whole list of things that you've accomplished. And again, it doesn't have to be just about um, a lifestyle, you, you know, shift. It, it could be, be I didn't that. react when X 
child did or said this, you know, it could, is that's a big thing, especially for me. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, right, I celebrate exactly. those, that's a big thing. I celebrate that because I, if I'm non-reactionary as, you know, um, as Dr. Brady and I were talking about yesterday, he's online with us. Hi. Um, it feels good and it stops me. And um, it's one of those, those small things I can put on my list. Because sometimes right. you're sitting there going, you know, like someone says, you know, what are your favorite things about yourself? You're like, uh, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to think. I do know that's one of the, the things that I can, I can relish. Is, well, you know, and I'm not, what, like, what are the your favorite, it, you know? what are your favorite things about yourself? Like that's really, really hard for people to come up with. And so if you do a list of accomplishments, that's a little bit easier for people to wrap their brain around. Right. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Like, you know what? I totally rocked that presentation at work or, right. you know, I got the kids to school on time or, you know, I got eight hours of sleep or, you know, and when you, when you allow yourself to do that for the past year, you would be surprised at how much you've accomplished, you know, and then that's a motivator of like, Oh wow. Like, you know, it's all listed out right here. Wow. I did all this great stuff. I could, I could continue that path. I love that. I feel better even just thinking about that. You know, at the end of 2018, Dana and I had some, we had some hurdles that we both overcame personally in 2018. But guess what? We also launched Thyroid Refresh, our living thyroid lifestyle magazine and website. And we launched Thyroid 30, our revolutionary 30 day wellness adventure. That's designed to help people do exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> Shift your mindset, bring more awareness to your choices, feel better, you know, up level your quality of life and the way you feel. So um, we are open for enrollment. I want to mention for Thyroid 30. If you're interested, we would love to have you join us for our upcoming wellness adventure. It starts Monday. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great session. So thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30, or you can just type in thyroid30 um, and you will find your way there to learn more or to enroll. So we would love to have you guys join us. And Jenny did a great, oh, is it still on there? Is it in the highlights? You did a great um, kind of Q&A about what thyroid30 is uh, on Instagram yesterday. Is it still there in case you have any questions? Oh, yeah, I uh, might be done, but I'll do another. I'll try to do another one today with my purple hair. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get on too. Yeah. I'm gonna be on Instagram after this. So um, we're we're all excited. Uh, we we can't wait to you know see who's gonna pop in and be on our teams because that's that's one of the best parts for me about Thyroid Thirty is the connection to the people and um, meeting new people, and then they get you. They understand. They feel what you're feeling, and you know uh, it feels supportive. And so the well, teams are my favorite part. One of my favorite parts. Ways to stay motivated in winter. How about connecting with a supportive community? You know, Thyroid 30 isn't just about community, but it is one of the most powerful and best parts of the game, I feel. Uh, mm -hmm. Just having people who get it, you know? So, yeah. Anna says, pause to stop and listen so you can find what's within and learn how to surrender to it. We don't always need to be driven by the outside world. When we allow the inner voice to guide us, we may find harmony with the outside world. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Yay. Pom -pom for that one. Okay, yeah. here we go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Anna. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do I need to be a thyroid know. patient? That's a question. That's a great question because um, I believe Dr. Brady Hurst is going to join us and he is not a thyroid patient. And so is his wife. She's going to join us. Uh, you do not have to be a thyroid patient because you can adapt all of the eight R's, the things that you score yourself on daily. You can adapt all of those to it. There, it's a lifestyle support platform, guys. So this is just yeah. lifestyle. We it is directed at thyroid patients, but um, you can you can use the site if you do not have thyroid disease. And we would I love for you to. I have thyroid disease and I've done it and it's fantastic. Right. And the, the guidelines the are really, really is awesome. The guidelines are like you know, it's what you eat, it's how you sleep, it's reducing toxins, it's nurturing your gut health, it's making time for self-care, trying to do some, some kind of physical activity each day. I mean, these are, they are, the recommendations are based on common core expert recommendations for thyroid and autoimmune health, but 
these are good for anyone, guys. Mm-hmm. This is whole life health, you know, and addressing not just, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds or just diet and exercise. It's everything. It's every choice you make in each day. All those little habits that may seem insignificant, like from what time you get up in the morning, right, Nod, to what what do you drink first thing? What do, How do you fall asleep at night? Are you, you know plugged into your screen too much during the day or you, you know, things like that. So, well, and now they have awareness to all of that on iPhone. They now have like how, how long you've been on screen time. I love this. You know, I know like for me, I'm like, Oh God, really? Like (laughs) for for me, I've been like, I've been like, yay, look at me compared to like, you know, my whole family. I'm like, I win. (laughs) Right. Well, and apparently they have like the apps that you're on too, you know, so just having that awareness is going to shift something like, wow, am I really spending like four hours on, you know, whatever Candy Crush or Instagram or whatever you're going to go, oh, whoa, that's a lot of time. What else can I do with that time that is, you know, more productive for my life, even if it's just sitting mm-hmm. reading a book that you're enjoying, you know, it's about, right. it's about that awareness and taking that moment. And then Mm -hmm. making the choice. And maybe sometimes even planning it, you know, making time for that, putting it on your calendar that today I'm going to mark this off because I want to go for a walk outside or I want to go to a class or I want to, I'm going to put it on my calendar 30 minutes for meditation or just staring out the window with a cup of tea. I mean, whatever it is that you need, you know, I think if you can, if you can plan it, you can do anything. and. I really want to incredibly powerful. I really want to hear what um, the people on our page and our audience and um, I want to hear what they had to say about what fills what fills their bucket. So I'm going to have Kaz put something on the page for that, because I think it's really cool to see people. You know, one person may say, well, just a cup of coffee or one person may say, you know, reading a book and seeing all those things are just positive. So I want to I want to ask Kaz to, to put that on our page because it makes me happy thinking about it, Yeah, you know, and also possibly. Oh, I put it on my calendar. Oh, I have to read for 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. And if I you're watching it. live or watching the replay later, you know, let us know, leave a comment. Yeah. What, what do you love to do? What fills your bucket? What are ways that you found to stay motivated and um, inspired throughout the winter? So, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today oh. and thank you much for being here with us Nadia you're so amazing we love your wisdom and your philosophy and and your attitude about life and how we can all thrive and and you know increase our quality of life through just mindset choices awareness everything that we talked about today oh thank you I love you guys we and thank you, you to everybody who showed up today and for all the replay watchers. We are so glad to have you and so honored that you're sharing this with us and going on this journey with us because thyroid disease is, it doesn't just stop tomorrow. It's pretty much a journey. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. This is a lifelong journey for so many of us. And that's why Dana and I created Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. Um, Thyroid 30 is about, our enrollment is about to close on Sunday. So if you haven't already signed up, please do. We would love for you to see what we're all about. It's incredibly affordable and um, we just love for you to even learn more. So go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30 to enroll now. Okay, guys. Well, this is this is it. This is our silly fun surprise. Um, purple hair day, purple power. We're so excited. Thank you, Nadia. And thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dana Bowman. And we'll see you next time on another fun episode of Getting Real with Dana and Jenny. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.